Jen OAN. Pe Jen Pellegrino with OAN. Yes. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. President, your approval ratings have been the highest they've ever been, as well as the ratings on your handling of the virus. Yet there are some networks that are saying they're debating whether or not to carry these briefings live. Do you think there's a link between the two? Well, I don't know. I know that. Uh, uh, well, that's a nice question. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want high approval ratings for this. I wish we could have our old life back. We had the greatest economy that we've ever had, and we didn't have death. We didn't have this. We didn't have this horrible uh, scourge, this plague. But uh, so I appreciate it very much. But you know what I want is I want our life back again. I want our country back. I want the world back. I want the world to get rid of this. This again. 151 countries, uh, and we're going to do it. We're going to have a great victory. We're going to have a great victory. You've said repeatedly that you think that some of the equipment that governors are requesting, they don't actually need. You said New York might need, I, not, I might not need 30,000. You said it on Sean Hannity's on, Fox News. You said you know, that you might. Why don't you some, people act? Let, let me ask you. You said why some don't states, you act, Why don't you act in a little more positive? It's always trying to my get question you. To you. Get is, you, get you. And you know what? That's why nobody trusts the media anymore. My That's question why to you people, is, how is that going to impact? Excuse me, you didn't hear me. That's why you used to work for the Times, and now you work for somebody else. New York is a, a bigger deal, but it's going to go also. But I have a feeling that uh, a lot of the numbers that are being said in some areas are just bigger than they're going to be. I don't believe you need 40,000 or 30,000 ventilators. And a guy who happens to be the president of the United States. I'm the president, and you're fake news. The statement from NBC News came last night saying Brian misrepresented events which occurred while he was covering the Iraq war in 2003. I used a double standard. Uh, something changed, and I was sloppier. And I said things that weren't true. And a guy who happens to be the president of the United States expressing uh, doubt about what we're reporting as reality right now and or how bad this may become. Yeah, and, and Brian, sometimes it's hard to tell if the president forgets that he's not a doctor. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. I'm not a doctor. Sometimes it's hard to tell if the president forgets that he's not a doctor. Here we go. Same old group. I'm not a doctor. Margaret, President Trump thinks that perhaps the governor of New York is overestimating the need uh, for ventilators. Um, as a New Yorker, I am almost speechless hearing that. I saw it last night. Hearing it uh, makes me um, so angry that I can frankly barely speak. Um, somebody tweeted recently that um, actually with the money he spent, he could have given every American a million dollars. got it. Let's put it up yeah. on the screen. It, when I read it uh, tonight on social media, it kind of all became clear. Bloomberg spent $500 million on ads. U.S. population $327 million. Could have given each American $1 million. It's an incredible way of putting it. It's an incredible way of putting it. It's true. It's true. Um, here in New York, where I live, we are hearing from doctors and health professionals and public officials every day who are on the front lines. We know that they don't have enough equipment to protect themselves and the communities that we live in right now. I want to start on the ventilator issue. The president uh, seems to think that the estimate of needing 30,000 ventilators, he feels it's too high, that you're you're overestimating how much you're going to need. What's your response to that? Uh, you're exactly right. This all comes down to ventilators. And, but, uh, and it is unusual, um, the number of ventilators we have in our health care system, when you add up all the hospitals in the state of New York, is about 4,000. We need about 40,000 here. So the president says 30,000 sounds high. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what, uh, what the basis is. I don't, I don't have a medical degree. Uh, so what I do is I just study the numbers and the science and the data, and I follow the data. To, you, to assure these states, these hospitals, that everybody who needs a ventilator will get a ventilator. So here's what I'll tell you. I think we're in great shape. I hope that's the case. I hope that we're going to have leftovers so we can help other people, other countries. Everybody who needs one will be able to get a ventilator. Uh, look, look, don't be a cutie pie, okay? Oh, you know, everyone who needs one. Nobody's ever done what we've done. FEMA, 
is sending us 400 ventilators. This is on the news this morning. We are sending 400 ventilators to New York. 400 ventilators? I need 30,000 ventilators. You want a pat on the back for sending 400 ventilators? What are we going to do for 400, with 400 ventilators when we need 30,000 ventilators? You're missing the magnitude of the problem, and the problem is defined by the magnitude. I look at actions, not words. They're doing the supplies. Here's my question. Where are they? Where are the ventilators? Where are the gowns? Where's the PPEs? Where are the masks? Where are they? The president said it's a war. It is a war. Well, then act like it's a war. And at the rate they are going, it is not happening. FEMA says we're sending 400 ventilators. Really? What am I going to, what am I going to do with 400 ventilators when I need 30,000? You pick the 26,000 people who are going to die because you only sent 400 ventilators. You know, when you talk about ventilators, that's sort of like buying a car. It's a highly, it's very expensive. It's a very uh, intricate piece of equipment. You know what it is, uh, heavily computerized. And, you know, the good ones are very, very expensive. And, you know, they'd say, uh, like Governor Cuomo and others, they'd say we want, you know, 30,000 of them, 30,000. I think of this. You know, you go to hospitals, they'll have one in a hospital. And now all of a sudden everybody's asking for these vast numbers. I watched uh, uh, Governor Cuomo, and uh, he mm -hmm. was talking about the ventilators, but he should have ordered the ventilators. He had a chance, because right here, I just got this out, that he refused to order 15,000 ventilators. I, I'll show this to Bill, but this says uh, New York Governor Cuomo rejected buying recommended 16,000 ventilators in 2015 for the pandemic, for a pandemic, established death panels and lotteries instead. So he had a chance to buy in 2015 16,000 ventilators at a very low price, and he turned it down. I'm not blaming him or anything else, but he shouldn't be talking about us. He's supposed to be buying his own ventilators. We're going to help. I we're working along with him. And then I watch him on the show complaining. And he had 16,000 ventilators that he could have had at a great price, and he didn't buy them. And he has said, yep, more than 4,000 ventilators alone this week. Everything that New York will need, Cuomo has requested, the president has delivered. But, you know, I watch day after day, and he says it. He talks with such great authority. You know, these politicians all talk, no action. That's what we're getting from Cuomo. I, sounds great. Sounds authoritative. Sounds wonderful. Came on my radio show for 40 minutes. Yeah, we'll all work together. Today, he had nothing but more whining, bitching, and complaining. It's getting pathetic, Andrew. What are you doing, and why didn't you prepare better? David, good morning. Is New York getting the help it needs from Washington? Tony, they are, but the governor says it's not enough, and you're about to sense his frustration. The governor's saying, look, federal government, you're sending me stuff, but what you're sending me isn't matching the urgency of the emergency. The governor is trying to convince the federal government we are the worst of where it is right now. I spoke to a couple of people today, and I don't want to mention their names, but there is hoarding going along, and it's not really something that you wouldn't understand. Uh, they don't want to lose their ventilators in case they need them, but these are areas in some cases, that probably will not need them. And in some cases, even if they do, they have too many. Um, I wanted to ask you about something, Shimon, because the president on Twitter attacked Governor Cuomo. He claimed that thousands of federal government ventilators were found in a New York storage facility and that the state must distribute them now. You know, you uh, were talking to Governor Cuomo just a short time ago, and you asked him about this, and he essentially gave you a fact check. What did he say? He did. He said it was ignorant uh, for the president to say something uh, like that. The fact that there are these ventilators, of course they're there. Uh, yes, they're in a stockpile. Because that's where they're supposed to be. Because we don't need them yet. We need them for the apex. The apex isn't here. So we're gathering them in the stockpile. So when we need them, they will be there. Now, he even admits they don't currently have a ventilator shortage in New York. We need 40,000. Okay, if you need 40,000, we'll get you 40,000. You're not even using the money, the 4,000 you got this week. 
As circumstances change, the president has pledged to everybody he will continue to move heaven and earth to get New York and every other state any ventilators, any medical equipment they need. It's not exactly been the simplest endeavor. We don't need them today because we're not at capacity today. That's why they're not deployed, because they're not needed. Nice hospital behind you. Oh, the country paid for that. Uh, governor, the country. Second point, well, maybe you don't need 30,000. Look, I don't have a crystal ball. Everybody's entitled to an, uh, their own opinion. But I don't operate here on opinion. I operate on facts and on data and on numbers and on projections. The governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, has been screaming for weeks now about how the state of New York needs more ventilators. They have shortages. People are going to die. It's going to be Trump's fault. President Trump has actually been sending ventilators to the state of New York. You know, we've got to help with this crisis, right? Well, on Tuesday, the 24th of March, Trump sent 2,000 ventilators. The very next day, on Wednesday, he sent 2,000 more. 4,000 ventilators sent to the state of New York to help with these shortages that they must be having. Well, finally, because Cuomo kept on screaming about this, about these shortages, Trump publicly stated, well, we're sending ventilators. They must be storing them. They must be hoarding them. Then Cuomo admitted it. Of course we're stockpiling them. We don't need them yet. So all that stuff about how there were, there were going to be mass shortages, or there were mass shortages, was just bunk. It was nothing. He was just complaining for no reason. Instead, they're hoarding them in the state of New York. Cuomo claims that some experts say that he'll need 40,000 ventilators. And as a result, he needs to hoard more than 30,000 more ventilators. Really. And he said, and I kid you not, this is an actual quote. He says, quote, I don't well, operate I don't here operate on opinion. Here I operate on, on facts and on I data on and on numbers and on, on projections. Data. Unquote. Do you know what a projection is? It's an opinion. That's what it is. I can project all kinds of things that aren't going to happen. Projections are guesses. They are not facts in any way. In fact, if you look at the projections of experts, New York is supposed to be underwater now, according to experts about 20 years ago. Remember that? But yet, Andrew Cuomo isn't asking for snorkels right now. He's asking for ventilators on some other expert's advice that's supposed to be right. But there's actually a problem with him listening to these experts in the way that he is, him hoarding. And you asked him about this. He essentially gave you a fact check. What did he say? He did. He said it was ignorant uh, for the president to say something uh, like that. Because he's the, the king of his private little empire, his private kingdom. But this really should bring your attention to another instance of media lies. Because ultimately, that's what we've been seeing for weeks. When Cuomo has been talking about how they have shortage, they're having shortages, how we're going to need ventilators, and he doesn't have enough, and people are dying because of Trump, it's the media's job to say, well, is that true? How many do you need? How many people have died as a result? Where are the shortages occurring? Why in those areas? But the media didn't ask any of those questions. They reported what Cuomo said as if it were fact, never looked into it because it fit the narrative that they wanted. That Trump was bad, Trump was mismanaging a crisis, and in some way Trump would lead to mass deaths. We've seen that repeatedly. Stop paying attention to the media. Stop being fed the narrative that you should be panicking and, you know, blaming Trump for everything there is and you know you should be terrified right now because that's the narrative that they want to promote for two reasons one because fear sells and two because they hate trump just stop listening uh but i deal with numbers and i deal with science and i don't deal with feelings and emotions and what i would like to see right that would be reckless and negligent of me as a government official now trump was pilloried for questioning whether new york really needed 30 to 40,000 ventilators. Well, Cuomo, as you remember, was adamant that his state needed them. But according to the latest estimates from the IHME model, the state's ventilator needs peaked two weeks ago at not 30 or 40,000, but 5,986. What about the hospital beds? Well, Cuomo said the state would need 140,000 hospital beds. Well, the IHME model now saying that number peaked at 19,836 hospital beds, 
only seven times less than what Cuomo said. Well, it was a bad model, I guess. But remember, the feds, they rushed thousands of ventilators to the state after production was ramped up. And then the U.S. NS Comfort was sent to New York City to provide beds. It's barely used. An Army Corps of Engineers moved heaven and earth to turn the Javits Center into a field hospital. Remember, Trump was relentlessly hit over the head and said, like, you've got to do this, you've got to do this. Could those resources, though, in retrospect, have been more useful elsewhere? Well, who knows? But it's worth examining. It's worth thinking about this. And that leads us to what is perhaps Cuomo's most tragic failure, a New York directive that requires nursing homes to readmit elderly residents who've tested positive for the coronavirus. Well, that result has been devastating, with over 3,500 nursing home fatalities. When the media finally got around to asking about this ridiculous policy, Governor Cuomo was largely in the dark. If you are tested positive for the virus, are you allowed to be admitted to a nursing home, is the question. Or readmitted. Yeah. It's a good question. I don't know. He didn't know. Uh, that is the vulnerable population here. Just ask Sweden what they've had to deal with. It's unacceptable. And why aren't other media outlets holding him accountable, either for the early numbers and the projections were off by a factor of six? Well, compare what you've heard about Cuomo to someone like Florida's Ron DeSantis. Well, the Miami Herald told him to act like he gives a damn. Well, Florida's death per 100,000 today is four. New York's 81 per 100,000. The Washington Post called Christy Gnomes of uh, South Dakota a hot spot. Well, South Dakota's death rate per 100,000, one. So maybe, just maybe, it's time to stop acting like partisan sounding boards and start taking a, trying to do a little bit more of an even-handed look at some of their favorite state leaders. Again, I think he's been aggressive for the people of his state. That's what a governor should do. But it doesn't mean you're a demigod and never get questioned. And by the way, that should include his appearances with, well, his little brother on CNN. And yet the reporting on these two governors, by any standard, if you just go out there and read it neutrally, was not neutral. No, it certainly was not. And nor was the coverage of Trump versus Cuomo. Same thing. Cuomo, arguably, is presiding over the, you know, the most disastrous outbreak in the country. Um, he, along with his, his fellow Democrat, Mayor de Blasio, uh, well through February, were telling people to get out and about, and there was no great threat. And then Cuomo seemed to panic and was demanding, you know, staggering amounts of, uh, of ventilators and so on. It proved not to be necessary. Um, and, you know, he talks about this much more smoothly than Donald Trump has. He could even be eloquent, but he's not presiding over a good outcome up there. Um, and he's, he, he's, he's lionized, whereas President Trump, who doesn't speak about this stuff very smoothly and arguably speaks about it too much, uh, is, is under withering criticism. Same thing. Uh, and quickly, one's a Democrat, one's not. On, 